This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. First Chronicles 16.9 Our first song, Marvelous Things, is a traditional song that we found and really enjoyed. It is in four parts. Soprano sing. He has done marvelous. He has done marvelous things. Praise the Lord. Also sing. Marvelous, 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 marvelous things. Praise the Lord. Tanner's second alto sing. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The reason we are going to rejoice in it is because this is the Sunday that we are in the chapel in the auditorium. So you're getting a recording uh, based upon our previous uh, recordings. But believe me, we are live and live it <laughs> in celebration today uh, as we gather together. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are so grateful for your faithfulness to us. We're so grateful, Lord, that your promise has uh, been fulfilled in many of the lives of those who are listening, for those of us who are viewing, for those of us who are coming together, Lord. You have been committed to us even from our very beginnings and lord we are so grateful that you go before us you are our provider and our protector and lord with you all things are made possible and lord as you have taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, I'm pointing so to Calvary, to the crimson floor. Many arrows pierce my soul, from without, within. Oh, what my Lord leads me on. I just want to thank you for your, your faithfulness in watching our uh, broadcast. And I pray that the messages that we have given you uh, in the past up until this present time have been a blessing to you, have been an encouragement to you, and have kept you centered in the will of God. Today I'm going to be talking to you from the thought of familiar that God brings us from the familiar to faith, from the familiar to faith. We can think about uh, what uh, God has done in our past and what God has promised that he would do for us and what God is doing for us right now as we live and breathe. Our scripture text is found in Mark chapter 6, verse 1 through 6, and it begins after Jesus has healed a 12-year-old girl. She was pronounced dead, 
And he and his disciples arrived, and there was a turmoil and brokenness in the community. And uh, Jesus told them that, well, she's not dead, she's resting. And they laughed him kind of to scorn because they knew in their mind and in their heart with the evidence that they had witnessed that she was indeed dead. He dismissed all of them and took the parents and went into the room and spoke to the girl and she became alive again. And he told them not to tell anyone. So we come into the Mark, the sixth chapter, verses one. Then he went out from there and came to his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter? the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simeon, and Simon. And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and his own house. Now, he would do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. They were incapable of receiving what God wanted them to have. Verse 1. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. Jesus had full knowledge of his community. He lived there. He grew up there. He was a citizen in his community, and he knew the deep feelings and needs of his community and the desire to restore and bring healing to them. When you have a love and concern for your community and for people that you know, and you have the resources to help them, you do it. Jesus knew the people and desired to bless them with a deeper knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. The truth came to speak truth. You know, the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And those who he spoke to would not receive the truth. They could not receive the truth. They could not believe. They couldn't hear, believe, and receive the power to be healed and be blessed with the gift of eternal life. Jesus was present in that community. He lived among them, and yet... They did not perceive or understand who Jesus was. Verse 2, And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things, and what wisdom is this which is given to him? And that... And, and what wisdom is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands. They did not comprehend. The people heard the scripture spoken with such assurance, love, power, and authority. They were astonished at this carpenter. It was like drinking cold water in the desert that we, which we frushed the thirsty soul. He, he, he laid his hands on those that were sick and he healed them. Jesus did this in their midst. They had never seen anything like this ever done in their lives. 
that a person lays their hands on those who are sick and they heal they are healed Jesus was in a familiar place which was customary for the people to gather on the Sabbath to hear the reading of the scriptures and worship it is clear in this story that some people gather for various reasons they gather for various reasons out of custom out of tradition not so much to hear the Word of God and to believe what they heard as living word other than experiencing the presence of God that there were some that were there just because not to experience God's presence in a new way before they could hear and receive his words they had judged him they had judged him they were prejudiced toward him from a place of familiarity but they could not deny the works of God verse 3 is this not the carpenter the son of Mary and the brother of James Joseph Judas and Simon and are not his sisters present here with us so they were offended at Jesus. They were offended at a carpenter. They were offended at him because of their perception of him. Jesus did not fit their mold or conform to their idea of who should be speaking to them. Hello, somebody. They looked upon him and they looked up and down upon him. Well, hey, isn't this the carpenter? Is he the carpenter? Who did he study under? Who was his teacher? Who gave him this wisdom? Who gave him this understanding of the scriptures? They devalued his truth because of unfamiliarity of him because of his position in the community he's just a carpenter they did not perceive any depth to Jesus by the tone of their displeasure and conversations he was being rejected you and I can imagine these conversations among those so-called influential people in the synagogue on the Sabbath day I know his mother Mary who was mysteriously pregnated before she married Joseph you remember the story you heard that she was pregnant before he married him I know his brothers none of them have achieved much in society they haven't gone to school they're just common ordinary people and here are his lonely homely looking sisters they are with us they're here they failed to see that God was at work because they had focused on what they thought Jesus was rather than who Jesus is a lot of times people will focus on what they think rather than what really is Jesus is the Word of God Jesus is the living word Jesus is the Son of God Jesus is who he says he is familiarity breeds contempt was alive and well in that community and it is alive and well even today we miss the move and the blessings from God because we are so familiar with everything and it brings us comfort it leaves us in our comfort zone because we're so familiar verse 4 but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not 
without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. I never want to get so familiar with the people that I live with that I can't hear or receive a word that God gives them for me. And we can do that. We can be so familiar with others that we tune them out. We can't hear what they're saying because we're looking at who we think they are and what they're capable of doing. Negative thoughts about each other will restrict the movement and presence of God among us. Being familiar can cause you to prejudge someone on how and what you think about their abilities. God takes the weak things of this world to confound those things that are mighty and those who think they're wise. He takes the weak things, the foolish things, to exalt those foolish things above those things that we ascribe to being high and exalted in our opinions. The being familiar can cause you to prejudge someone. From their view, Jesus is just a carpenter, an average man in an average family whose father is absent. That is all that they saw in him. John 1, 11, verse 12 says, He came to his own, and he, his own did not receive him. But as many as receive him, to them God gives the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Jesus came to reveal God to the people to let people know that God has no bounds, that God cannot be put in a box, that we can't be so familiar with the works of God that when God wants to do something different, we look at it in a disdained way. John lets us know that he came to his own. The movie, The Shack, was just brilliant. When that movie came out, I was kind of prejudiced because it appeared to me that God was taking the form of a woman. God can do whatever he wants to do. He was showing us in this picture that God can do what he wants to do with whomever he wants to do it with. That movie blessed my heart. It was mind-blowing in how God revealed himself to us. He is without limitations and can show up outside of our comfort zone. Hallelujah, somebody. Show up, the Lord, we ask. Show up, the Lord, we pray. We want the Lord to show up. Verse 5, now he would do no mighty works there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them because of their disposition, because of their failure to get out of the spirit of familiarity, to see the hand of God, to see the works of God. We limit the will of God whenever our focus is centered around the familiar rather than being open to Holy Spirit to lead us into a deeper level of faith. God always leads his people out of the familiar places into leading them in faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
God seeks to lead his people from the familiar to walking with him by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. We see the familiar. We experience the familiar every day when we wake up. We get on those familiar shoes. We get put on those familiar clothes. We go to our familiar places because it brings us a little comfort. Throughout the Bible, God called individuals to live and walk with faith with him, walk in faith with him, not knowing but in trusting. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all of his ways, and he shall direct your path. That is the word of God. The Old Testament reveals people who were called to uh, who were called by God, to name a few like Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Moses, Elijah, David, Gideon, Jonah, Daniel. In the New Testament, John the Baptist, the disciples, Mary, Martha, Paul, and many others who were called out of the familiar to walking with God in faith. And there are those who are present today who experience God's presence by walking by faith and experiencing the impossible becoming a reality as possible. With God, all things are made possible. When we get out of the familiar and walk in faith with God, things happen beyond our ability to comprehend. Verse 6, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. You see, God is going to always go to those who are desiring him, who are seeking him, who are hungering after him. Our unbelief has prevented many opportunities for the Lord's intervention in our lives. If we think that God can't, it is more likely that he will not. Because without faith, it is impossible to believe God. And God gives us the gift of faith to believe him. What will it take for you to truly believe that God really loves you and that God wants the best for your life and that God is desiring to lead you into depths of faith and belief. He promised us that he would always be with us. He didn't promise that we would never be afflicted. He didn't promise that we would never have bad days. He did not promise that we would not have trouble in our lives. He said that we would have tribulations, that there would be trouble, would be of good cheer, for he is with us and we need to recognize that God is with us God the Father who created us purposed and planned for us to be with him by sending his son Jesus to be the way back to the Father I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father except through me God planned for you to have an everlasting relationship with him in spite of our sin Jesus came to cleanse us from our sins and to restore us into a rightful relationship with God. How long will it take you to receive that word, to believe that word? How long? God will fulfill the desires of those who hunger and thirst for his presence if you are alive when he returns and he is going to return. A promise from God, a delay does not mean that the promise will never happen. God promised that he was going to return. And there are signs happening every single day of our lives letting us know that he's on his way. When he returns, will you have the faith that is necessary to believe that he is the son of God? and that he is the way to the Father. I pray 
in the name of Jesus that you would receive this word and that you will come out of the familiar into a place of faith and believing God with your whole heart, mind, and soul that his truth is unbreakable. If he says what it is, it is the way that he said it would be. The Lord bless you and may he keep you in the center of his will. We pray that you would not wait too late to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. It is in his death and in his burial and in his resurrection that gives us the hope of a life of eternity in his presence by believing in his death, burial, and resurrection. I pray that God would rivet these words to your heart and by your confession of faith that you will declare that I am a child of God. We will have a pause in our normal recording each uh, week that we have been. We're going to go live and we are in preparations of being able to tape those services and hopefully put them on the website. So there may be a little disruption uh, between that time and, and now, but hope in God. Continue to pray for us, continue to believe God, continue to be formed and transformed by the renewing of your mind that God is who he says he is. May the Lord bless you and the peace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest upon you until he calls us in. In Jesus' name we pray. We love you. The sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance. The stars shall applaud. Oh, 
the angels shall sound the shout of his coming the sleep 